So I think here I want to move on just to talk about some of the other kinds of events in JavaScript because most of the things that you're going to be doing are going to be reactionary. So you know somebody clicks on something, something happens. Um, almost everything is event driven in JavaScript. Um, here you probably have seen on the uh, W3Schools page under events, um, they list list some of the common HTML events. Um, obviously, there's you know you can you can read through this stuff forever and never read it all, but these are some of the commonly used ones. Um, so just to give you an example of you know some other ones, we already we looked at on click. Uh, we're going to look at on change in a bit. Uh, you can do key down stuff. You know, don't do something until the, the whole page is done loading. And right now I'm just going to show you how to do a basic uh, mouse over and mouse out. <coughs> so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, let's get rid of that. I'm going to take this uh, uh, list here. I'm going to make it so that as I'm moving my mouse over each one of these list items, it like lights up or something. So, you know, that's a pretty common thing that people will ask you to do when designing a site, some type of, you know, effect while you're mouse, mousing over something. So to, to do this, I'm going to uh, take a look at my styles here. And, you know, again, there there's some advanced techniques to do this, but, you know, just to start off with, you know, so you know what those you know, uh, more advanced things we're kind of trying to solve you know why, what the basic strategies used to be um, you know we would take this style here and you know instead of just a normal list item style you know I create a new class for it so maybe um, dot list item highlight sure why not <coughs> and instead of italic let's go font weight bold and color red that should be pretty obvious. So I'm going to save that, and uh, this is the style that I want. So remember, don't forget that the dot means class. So list item highlight. So back in my JavaScript, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to write two functions. I'm going to write one for the mouse over and one for the mouse out. So just thinking about this for a second, if we look at our HTML and scroll all the way down, here's our list items. So before, you know, I showed you um, if you wanted to get at something in the DOM, we would have to, you know, put a function on it, and then the function would have to say, oh, well, now I have to go find the element that I want to change. So let me do a document dot get element by name or get element by ID or whatever. But there's actually another way to do it. Like I said, there's kind of like hundreds of ways to do all these things. Um, we can say on mouse over equals, and then we can make up a function name like mouse over. And what we can do is instead of having to go find this thing later, we can just pass a parameter this. So this is going to be literally the list element. So if I go back to my scripts and I write a function, function mouse over takes a parameter x and let's just alert it. So now when I refresh my browser, if I mouse over that top one, Mm, nothing happened. Did I get any JavaScript errors? No, no errors there. Did I save everything? Save, save, save. Mouse over this. Mouse over X. Alert X. Refresh this. Oh, I guess I didn't save something. So there we go. We see our object HTML LI element. So that's perfect. That's exactly what we want. So we got our list item element. Oh, see what's happening? I'm trying to move my mouse down, 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 down. As soon as I hit there, it's firing the event. Why? Because if I look at inspect element, scroll down a little bit. Oh, got to do this fast. If I open this up and I go down to my list and I look at my element, they're all really, really, really wide. So that you know, the element is going all the way to the other edge of the screen. So I'm going to actually at this point go to my styles and say, you know what, these list items, I don't want them to be like that. I want them to be with 200 pixels. How about that? Oops. So now that should do it. Yep, now I can move my mouse freely over here and it won't trigger the action until I get close to it. Perfect, so we're pretty close actually. It's not that hard to do this. So let me put this mouse over event on all of these. And you know, once again, this is not exactly the optimal way to do it. This is just getting started. Um, hey, why didn't I get my quotes? There we go. End of the quote. 
All right, so now each one of these, as I mouse over them, they're going to invoke the uh, mouse over function, but each one of them is going to pass themselves as the parameter. So I got that one, move down, I got that one. All right, so that's good. So now, instead of, uh, I don't want to alert the thing, that's kind of pointless. What I want to do is I want to change the style so that I you know, can see like this little mouse over effect. So I can say, hey, the thing that you just passed over, change its class name to B. What did I name it? I named it, I think, uh, li, oh, I forgot. I named it list item highlight. So now it takes the thing that I mouse over and changes the class. Boom, 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 boom. So that's pretty cool. But now I want it to change back. And as you might have guessed, I'm going to wire up another event on each one of these things. And I'm going to call the second one on mouse out. And this is going to be mouse out this. All right. So instead of that last quote, I'll do all that. One, two, three, four, five. Now if I had to define my other function mouse out and uh, you know remember so this is you know combining JavaScript and the styles this here is a global st style that I've done based on the, the element selector li so that's not going to go away if I remove the list item highlight class so if I say hey you're, you have no class you, you have no style at all that doesn't get rid of this you know that's it's really important you know I probably should have said that during the CSS thing but if you remove all classes completely this stuff remains because that was not based on a class that was based on the inherent aspects of the element so I can say the class equals blank and I'm just gonna get rid of this stuff that's exactly what I want so I'm just gonna say x dot class name equals blank and it sh should go back to the, you know, it's basically just going to remove this class, and we'll be able to see that reflecting in the DOM. Oops, what did I do wrong? Oops, function mouse out, x dot class name. I must have a problem over here. Oops, I forgot to end the quotes on my on mouse over properties. Save that. That should be a little better. All right, so now I've got my mouse over effect exactly what, like I wanted. And the cool thing about this is if you inspect element, scroll down a little bit. So now, let's actually open these up a little bit so we can see. And Oh, not those, wrong one. Open up that UL, so this is pretty cool. If we watch, scroll down here so I can see, if we watch our list items actually in the DOM down there, you can see as I move over them, the DOM is literally changing while I'm um, firing those events. Um, so that's cool. That and that's kind of the point of this is uh, you know different. You know, at different times you want different things to fire based on certain things happening. And every time, you know, this is kind of the key. Every time you see anything happening or changing on the screen, you know, anything at all happening, moving, changing, is must be you know changes in the DOM things don't just happen you know like magically the values in the DOM are changing and the browser is you know constantly reevaluating and reinterpreting the DOM to see you know what the what it should show on the screen so uh, that's pretty simple um, that kinda does it for that part and the last thing that I wanted to go through uh, in the the fourth and final video for the introduction to JavaScript is talking about um, how JavaScript is dynamic and talking about um, you know just some of the the different ways you can define functions, um, you know I said at the very beginning in the intro that JavaScript is very powerful and kind of a, f a language that gives you a lot of freedom. So uh, I'm just going to show you a couple different techniques that are uh, that exemplify that. You know I'm never going to be able to go through all of it, but uh, I want to give you at least a, a pretty good idea just to start off with here in the first week. So we'll get into that now.